guys, welcome back to Sunset Film Alliance. Today I'm doing a 35mm crappy $35 lens I got on Amazon back in 2018. I did a video on this lens earlier, but it was kind of low quality and it was back on my Panasonic G85. Right now I'm doing this on the Sony, so I have no autofocus on the Sony right now, I'm just using manual and eyeballing it. So please excuse if any parts of this video are slightly out of focus since focusing on a Sony is kind of a pain in the butt. So basically, I'm just going to take a walk. Of course we have Sony's lovely stabilization happening right now. Um, but yeah, for 35 bucks, it's an APS-C size lens. But it, ha it does a very interesting image. For instance, when the middle is in focus, so let's uh, open this up to 1.7, it goes to 1.7. And let's focus right here, right on this little knob thing. I move it to the left, it's out of focus. Move it to the center, it's back in focus. Move it to the left, it move it to the right, out of focus. So focus more of a circle in the center or on the edges. I can focus via the edges right here and now it's out of focus in the center slightly. It's very interesting. Also, a crazy amount of flare effects happen. There's a circular flare. This flare is just from this. Keep it out of focus, it goes crazy. Flaring does not improve much when you stop down. You stop down all the way, it goes away. But that's basically at F16 and now we're with high ISOs in daylight. Let's open this back up. Yeah, look, you can be very cinematic. Right now I'm using a Kodak Gold picture profile that I uh, got off of another YouTube video. I'll show you the YouTube video in the description. So just check that out if you would like to shoot in this preset if you think it looks good. Look at this insane flare right here. Look at that flare. No matter what focus I am at, the flare is just nuts. Wow. Oh, that's bright. Can I stop it down and improve it? Yeah, only if I stop down all the way. Stop down all the way, you can see the pattern of the aperture blades right here. You open it up, you get the crazy flare right here. So let's see if this crazy flare goes away. Yeah, it, it goes away at about, let's check, F8 but the markings on the lens are very imprecise. Just gonna try to run and gun with this thing, but I have a feeling that it is not a good run and gun lens. Maybe good for some cinematic type stuff, but I believe it probably won't be as much because of its insane characteristics, like this flare. I'm trying to get a, let's get a focus of this leaf right here. There we go, and then, oh, and look, I move one inch this way and the flare goes crazy, because the sun is right there. I point directly at the sun, the flare is actually not the worst thing in the world. But I point right off angle to the sun, and the flare is absolutely horrible, and the camera just decide, hi, I'm not going to cope with it right now. The camera's auto exposure is kind of going crazy right now. But, yeah. So let's see if another color profile will suit this lens better than Kodak Gold. Let's try it. So now I'm trying Fuji Superior 400 profile with this little crappy lens. It has an interesting effect. The colors are slightly different. They're not as close to real life as a cheap film would be. But they lead to an interesting look that some may find creative. Some may find just kind of crappy. Lens flares aren't the worst in overcast scenarios. I bet right is that, oh, the, but the purple fringing on this lens is horrible. Don't expect any coatings at all on this lens. Is it still sold on Amazon? Yes. It's uh, sold under many different names. Photosy and several others. The one I have is Photosy. 
Are they all made in the same factory? Probably. Are they all made by the same company? Yes. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. And it doesn't matter because copyright doesn't seem to really exist too much over in China. Or at least patent protection. Which I'm not sure if there are many patents for this lens and maybe based off a of really old lens. So I'm opening and closing the aperture right here. This is fully closed down to f16, or at least it says f16. This is opening up to f4, I think. This is opening up to f1.7. I said before it uh, does cover an APS-C image circle. So on full frame, if I do not put it on APS-C mode, this is an a7R4. It looks like this. You can see the stabilization doing its job. Uh, the circle of the lens is slightly jittering around. If you like a weird look, you can actually see the focus mapping here better. On the very edges, you can see that it goes in focus and then out of focus. But this is unusable for full frame. So this is really an APS-C only lens. Though you can use it on full frame cameras just in an APS-C mode if it has it or by cropping the video later when shooting in full frame mode, thus losing resolution. But yeah, that's all, about all I have to say about this lens, and the film profiles are very interesting. I hope you enjoyed this weird quick video. I'm sorry I'm not doing as many big videos as I said I would be doing, but that is simply because I'm working a lot at my job. I just simply work at a, as a cashier at a pizza place. Uh, and yeah, if I could make money for movies, I would. Unfortunately, I can't, so I have to work a real job. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and thank you to all ten of you, or maybe five of you who watched till the end. And have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.